Hi, I'm Kyle Byrne with a very special guest, Dr. Joseph Nyer. Thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure. Exciting times for the college. Iona has reached record enrollment with 922 freshmen. Explain what this means to Iona. It means everything to the college. What it really means is that the community, the community uh, in the tri-state area, across the country and internationally, are learning what you already know, that Iona College is a great place to be. And that's why we see so many freshmen here today. Iona recently released a first year report of the strategic plan. Explain what the strategic plan is and talk about some notable achievements in its first year of implementation. So we have a five year strategy that has six primary goals that are focused really on you ensuring that student distinction is at an all time high, that we have a quality student experience, that we improve academic distinction, that we build the proper infrastructure, raise the necessary resources, and elevate our ability to tell the Iona story. And we're entering year two, which means we just completed year one. At convocation, we shared the first year report. And many things happened this year. Uh, for example, we opened a new residence hall. Uh, we opened a new graduate program, or moved a graduate program to Rockefeller Center. Launched new certificate programs. Expanded the size of the campus by 20%. Now the brothers reside on campus. We've, uh, we've elevated our ability to tell the Iona story, the move the war, like, like seeing mm -hmm. the pen. It's always we'll talk good more to see about that. that. <laughs> Very good. Uh, many great things happened last year, and the first year report summarizes year one of a five-year strategy. Now, you can't do everything in one year. You have to build on prior successes. And I think what I'm most excited about from last year is that the college moved up in the rankings from 166 to 90. It's not moving in the rankings that, it's, that excites me necessarily. It's the third party endorsement that our work over the last couple of years to curb tuition increases, mm -hmm. offered record amount of financial aid, and the great work that our alumni do, the special students that come here and what happens on this campus. Uh, we went from 166 to 90 on return on investment in the country, which means you made a good choice. Mm -hmm. If you come to Iona and do well, you're gonna have a very successful life not necessarily focus exclusively on monetary gains, but on your quality of your life. And I think that third party validation speaks volumes about the types of students that come here, what happens while they're here, and what they do with their lives. And that makes me very proud. Uh, New Rochelle Mayor Noam Branson spoke to the Iona College community on September 18th. He talked about the city approving zoning for college related buildings along North Avenue. That's right. Yesterday, the college announced it's purchasing Canone's Pizza and Campus Wings property adjacent to the college. So explain the significance of this acquisition. So what the city council did is took action this summer. It took us a year to um, work with the city and the community to have the legislation drafted and presented in a way that resulted in its success with the vote. But now, if you are a landowner or a developer or you want to sell your property, uh, you can go as high as seven stories on North Avenue if it's college related use with an agreement with the college. Hmm. So what that's done is it creates an opportunity to develop North Avenue uh, for college use that benefits the community and benefits the college. Now the, back to your question, we just, we just announced we're acquiring uh, the land that has Canonies and Campus Wings. That's been a long sought after piece of property by the college. It's a strategic uh, acquisition. It borders the campus and it's part of the entryway. So we're very excited that we'll be closing on that by mid-October, and then we'll be designing the use of that space as part of the campus master planning process. So you don't know as of now if it's gonna be a residence hall or academic building? Uh, we should have a roadmap for how to build so we don't end up building things that we don't need or need to take down. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's been a lot discussed, but we, I'll leave it to the experts in master planning mm -hmm to advise us on the long-term use uh, of that space. At the fall convocation on September 9th, you spoke about how this was a record year of annual fundraising for Iona. That's right. Endowment has grown to $75 million. That's right. Where is the money going to? We passed the draw policy and we draw four to four and a half percent uh, of, the falling, of the rolling five-year average, which is a term that measures growth in the endowment from investment returns. And we reinvest those monies in scholarships faculty development and strategic priorities for the college. So the money comes out of the endowment each year and supports the college. And thanks to the philanthropy, thanks to prudent cash management, thanks to recent gains in the stock market, our endowment has grown significantly. 
but it takes all of those pieces. It takes fundraising, it takes managing your, uh, uh, your assets well, and it also, uh, we're fortunate to have had a very prosperous last several years in, uh, in investment gains. And as a consequence, uh, our endowments reached $75 million, which is wonderful. Also at the convocation, keynote speaker Don, Dr. John Ebersole spoke about the significance of online courses. Do you foresee Iona creating online courses? Well, we have, uh, as you we want to know. We have a couple so, already, but um, providing more options. So a couple things to mention here. One is I see convocation. It should be a provocation of thought. Mm -hmm. we're, we're a college. Yeah. That's what we're here to do. And inviting Dr. Ebersol uh, was part of that process. This year, as part of our strategy, the, there's a committee that's faculty-led that's looking at all of our academic programs. Mm -hmm. and are we offering them in the right places? What should we be offering in the future? What do future students need? Are we offering just the right types of programs in the right way? Mm -hmm. Which includes taking an examination of our current online course offerings and making some recommendations to the college on are we occupying the right space? Now, most people say, of course you should have more online courses. A lot of colleges have rushed into that part of the market mm -hmm. and uh, have suffered significant financial consequences for not positioning the model correctly. Other colleges have been very successful. One size doesn't fit all with how you offer online courses. I recognize, I think you do too, that it's another pathway to share information, to teach. Mm -hmm. How much of that we should do and how we do it uh, is something that deserves much more thought than applying what another college did and hoping that it's successful. So that critical self-examination is occurring this year and we'll have the answers for you pretty soon. Over the summer you went down to Washington DC to visit the editorial board of Inside Higher Education. So talk about what you discussed there. Well, so Inside Higher Education is a national publication that has a daily distribution and they deal with topics and issues, emerging trends in higher education, challenges at other colleges and universities where the, where the field is moving, uh, important issues like affordability, et cetera. So we went down to talk all things higher education, to talk about those tr types of trends across the country, talk about the challenges facing all colleges and universities, and what Iona is doing in our space uh, to elevate. So we talked a lot about our strategy and the things that I think a lot about, uh, what I hear from you and from other students and other presidents that I talk to on a regular basis. But it was really a dialogue and it's important as we continue to elevate the distinction of Iona College that we meet with the editorial boards of major news publications like Inside Higher Ed to have that dialogue. On a sad note, you are losing some colleagues this semester. Yeah. Brian Nickerson, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. Sure and Sister Pat McGinley, your special um, assistant. Both have been instrumental figures in this college. That's right. So reflect on their time here at Iona. Well, uh, it's always hard to see people go. Uh, Sister Pat McGinley, she's actually the board secretary and senior policy advisor, mm -hmm. uh, has served the college for over seven years. Um, she's going back to a parish to, oh. uh, to be a pastoral associate, uh, and uh, it's how she started her career, and uh, I think it's a great place to go. Uh, you know she's a nun, she's a sister. Mm -hmm. She's a big loss for the college. Um, we think so highly of Sister Pat that the alumni and the Board of Trustees created a student scholarship fund in her honor and many people donated funds so that there would be a scholarship that would live in perpetuity to recognize Sister Pat's contribution. There's the saying at Iona, the proof's in the people. And we have two people that are leaving the college to, to do go great things, to, to go to do great things, uh, but we'll miss them. Uh, Dr. Brian Nickerson, he's an Iona alum mm -hmm. who became a professor, who became a dean and then became our interim and then our provost. And he's going to Mount Sinai Medical School uh, in, a, in a very significant position that was the right fit for him. Mm -hmm. And as an Iona alum, we want him to go on to do great things and move the world. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, and I believe he's going to be doing that. Well, on a lighter note, the college has a new logo and branding campaign with the marketing theme, like you mentioned, Move the World. So what does this slogan mean to you, and how does it fit with the college mission? It means everything to me. I, it's not my nomenclature. It's mm -hmm. not a term that I had coined before I came to the college, mm -hmm. but I think it's brilliant. I think it's emblematic of Blessed Edmund Rice, who went on to form the Christian Brothers mm -hmm. and move the world. I think it's emblematic of what our alumni do every day, as evidenced not only by the return on investment, but their impact around the globe. 
whether you're uh, founding a nonprofit to put water filtration systems in Africa, or leading the NASDAQ, or teaching in a, in a K-12 classroom, you're changing lives. You're moving the world. And our students do that during their time here, great service, and it's what higher ed is all about. So from our founder, to the Christian brothers, to our alumni, to our students, to the people that work at this college, it's one thing that I think binds us together, is that we're focused on trying to create a better place, a better world. Well, we'll end on that note. Thank you very much for joining me today. It's great to be with you. Yes.